certain that if we can combine the right frequencies that it's going to unlock the gate to a lot of these unexplained phenomena that people are searching after. Everything in the universe is made up of its own resonant frequency, its own vibrational rate. Correct. And just trying to find that magic combination where when you bring two or more together, it creates a vibrational harmony. And I feel like it would just puncture through the veil, through the gate, open the doors to where a lot of things that are otherworldly, a lot of things that are in a different dimension are able to be more easily seen, easily accessed. shared with us that it's all about frequency. It's all about their frequency versus ours and us being able to adjust, you know, in a way because there's two types of frequency. And I've forgotten the official names, but there's one where if you approach that tree, that tree operates at a specific frequency as what we know to be a solid object. Wherein, in order to mutate that, we have to match its frequency. Whereas, if you have water, for example, and our bodies are primarily water, when we consider this, it accepts frequency and adopts it. So the proper frequencies can create healing and realign blockages that are in our energetic sphere according to that water element. So it is, it's a matter of coming up with the right combination, key, pitch, both. Well, you know, we've talked so many different times about um, ultrasound and infrasound and people that have had encounters and how it um, creates an effect like yes. certain times it will be an extreme catatonic state or confusion, disorientation 
uh, overboding sense of fear or dread. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like being stuck in a long car ride with your mother-in-law and two of her <laughs> twisted sisters. You know, you're not sure what's going to happen next, but you know, it's probably <laughs> not going to be too good. But those are different frequencies that they can emit at different times for their certain different needs. But there's other frequencies that they use, whether it's to open an interdimensional pathway right. or different things along the lines of this. And it's not just them. You know, you stop and consider all of the countless stories that talk about um, UFOs, and I think now you term it uh, UAP, used to be unidentified flying object, now it's unknown aerial phenomena. Either way, you're splitting hairs, but it's the same thing. It's something weird going on in the sky. But several times you'll hear people describe what they heard as a type of tendonitis, a ringing or a humming or a, a pitch that is just unusual to them. And what? other times they talk about it being a low mechanical sound, right. which seems to be more focused around the dread, you know, factor those when they have those tones. really scary situations. But Anku has also interjected that they can use ultrasound also, that vibration that we can't hear by way of our audible ear, but that we're still receiving. So I believe for many of them, their talents are very multifaceted in using sound. But we've also learned that sound has to be accompanied with intention. And that it's the intention that creates the reality, the opening, the manifestation of the experience. It's the sound that carries that thought, that vibration of intention with it. So it's going to be interesting as we mess with sound to see just what combinations it does take. Well, that's exactly what I'm getting at. It's finding that certain specific combination, that tone, frequency, vibrational intent. You know, right now we're kind of stumbling through the dark with all of that, just trying to figure it out and grope along and see what works, what doesn't work. These guys are masters at it. They've been doing it forever. Yeah. So to them, it's no more than just a thought. I think it was a couple years ago as we approached the edge of the woods that I clearly heard Anku say, walk with intention. And at that moment, it wasn't really registering with me, why then, why that? But as we've gone along, I believe through our conversations, you know, all the different things that are brought to us to discuss I believe well don't step on Mrs. Lumpy we found the boy a little bit ago walking in hopefully they'll find each other but as we have gone further along in realizing all of our conversations are also creating a frequency and if we're walking with intention accompanied with the frequency of word, ultimately, it could have helped become responsible for the multitude of experiences we started having also. Yeah, several times when you're in the woods, you'll hear the birds and the crickets and the different noises going on in the woods, the natural sounds to the woods, and then all of a sudden it just goes dead quiet maybe five minutes goes by a little longer and then you start to realize you're not alone and everything else is quieted down listening they're feeling that vibration that's Correct. coming off of them 
and many of them are hearing those frequencies that our ears more than likely are unable to pick up. Just because we can't hear it doesn't mean we can't feel it or can't sense it. Mm -hmm. The further we've gone along, the more I believe the people are great translators of all frequencies to include the environment that we're in, say, here in the woods, because all of the birds, which the songbirds have quit now, I hear some cicadas or something off in the distance, but I believe they interpret their language not much differently than they interpret our own. And now it got eerily quiet just like in the last couple minutes. Most of what we hear is behind us, so we'll see what's in front of us. But I know that we're on to something with the frequencies trying to manipulate them and experiment with that with different tones, different sounds, different oscillations, bring out some different equipment maybe and try different things to see what would work and what doesn't work. Mr. heard a grunt. I want to say this way. I call it a grunt. It's almost a combination between a wolf and a grunt. And oftentimes, when you do come across these sounds, a lot of people want to become very reactionary. And I think it's important to feel within you, is it a hello or is it a warning? For me, when I just interpreted that, it was, hey, that was what my body felt. You know, we're here. Yeah, I would venture to say that right here, right now, at this moment in time, there are probably more people out there with cameras and equipment trying to explore and discover and unlock all of the cryptid mysteries, all of the paranormal mystery, all of the UFO and alien mystery. Nightmares in my head, I fear that the thoughts build up until I can't hear that my mind fills up into a creature and it haunts me somewhere much deeper. You got to stop and realize what's the price of that 15 minutes of fame. More importantly, I think it's important to note that each and every experience is completely different. Unfortunately, a lot of them that are researching. Hang on just a minute. We just. Just about stepped over one the of top the little, of that one. Little ones. A little small foot there, and the toes push the pine needles up. stop and consider this for just a minute. If there were worldwide irrefutable proof that Bigfoot and other cryptids, off-planet alien species, all of these other things, bona fide actually are there, what would be the fallout consequence of that on 
the let's say the powers that be the puppet masters that you know we answer to on a daily basis that don't want to lose control of what they think they have control of when all of a sudden a mass awakening of oh there's things out there with a lot more technology a lot more intelligence. capability intelligence etc and so on why do we have to listen to the bully on the schoolyard anymore when all of this is going on out there well and more than likely it would cause a lot of people to begin to actually research ancient texts and things that haven't been changed to the effect that they will realize that these things have always been around and the blanket came down over us at some point just to keep us in that dark and the saying that what's been seen can't be unseen there's truth in that and for us there will never ever ever be a doubt in our mind based on what we've experienced whether anybody else on this globe believes it or not um, when you is irrelevant when you absolutely know you know and there's no reverse gear on that there's no changing it or going back and there's a lot of baggage that goes with that too you get the ridicule from some facets that it wouldn't matter if you slapped them in the face with a dead fish they'd say it was something else <laughs> yeah that's not a good visual. that's a good visual i mean there's some <laughs> things that need to be slapped in the face with a dead fish <sighs> but yeah you've got that element nagging at you <laughs> then you've got Excuse the me. ones that want to try to intrude and push their way in over on top of that and it creates an entirely different atmosphere an entirely different vibrational field in the area that you're working in so what was a two-way give and take with say the big hairy guys out here now all of a sudden they're on defense because there's other things poking around and you get the big eye in the sky watching down in the unmarked helicopter flyovers part of our relocation Uncle made it very clear it was a safety issue and you know something I've tried to explain and we've tried to explain is that when we began working with these beautiful people we gave an oath we gave an oath to not even you know never share where they are it's always been our right but in order to comply with our promise we've had very strict guidelines most of that's been fairly open but at a certain point they kind of and I believe because we started getting some really unusual drone activity we had really low flying flyovers really low and it it just got to a place where we had to honor our word to them which was their safety and then you get approached by certain strange individuals and they're um laying very heavy innuendos that something nefarious might happen down the road if you keep on the path that you're on and trying to you know be the bully in the schoolyard kind of thing and you just have to maintain a balance but first and foremost it's important to realize this they've often called it project a project but this project has always been on their terms and we've been gifted with being able to share that with them and if they give a caution light that causes us to have to slow down and re-gear for their safety and perhaps our own we're going to do that and um, we, we have done that we backed off for pretty much the entirety of almost a year from the public aspect of this just so we could create a safety zone buffers and put things in place to make it a lot less accessible
I feel like the majority of that's fairly well been taken care of now. But it's making sure that they see the same things we do because their awareness and their knowing goes far beyond ours. And we'd be fools not to recognize that and not to trust beings that are just that intelligent and foreseeing. I'm trying to see what I'm seeing. You know, I don't want to come across sounding like paranoia Pete because I'm not. I'm not paranoid in the least, but I have mm -hmm. came to the realization that there are a lot of um, ankle biters that think they're in control and pulling the strings that actually aren't. The biggest thing is they're afraid of losing control of that perceived string. So. I've had a lot of individuals ask if we got spooked, if we had a bad encounter, if, you know, spooked, no, no. After dealing with some of these things, there's not a lot that can spook you. <laughs> no, we can straight up say there was nothing in the woods or in this realm of what we explore out here no. that put us off. If anything, they've kept us safe truthfully and they've still been getting their treats they've still been getting interaction we still are doing what we're doing just most of the time the camera isn't with us but they've been good you know they've been good to show themselves they've been good to let themselves be heard they in a multitude of facets and really, although it's difficult to be patient, I have absolutely no complaints whatsoever. Another big... Yeah, another brand new Big X down there. But you know, we've been walking and talking quietly out here today with the camera back in hand, trying to ease them back into the whole feel of it, because we haven't been bringing it out with us lately. I just didn't want to be intrusive, overwhelmingly intrusive with it in their face, like, ah, here's the camera, come on guys. Take a minute to get all this geared back up again I believe hopefully not too long let's see what do we got today there's some peanut butter little hot sausages sardines two bags of spicy red beans and rice some apples little rice cakes with chocolate with chocolate mm -hmm. a few little suckers more peanut butter, sardines, and just a little bit, a little bit stuff. I want to walk back up around over there for a minute. Well, that was the uh, direction that I think I heard the wolf or the, <laughs> the huff. grunt or the. These little ones now have doubled and tripled in size over the last several months. I 
I can't get over how quiet it got. All eyes upon us. Mm. They might be thinking, I can't believe how noisy it got. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> nah. May have caught their attention early on before the camera came on when we were playing with those tuning rods, forks. Yeah. I said rods, tuning forks is what I meant. which sometimes when they're not familiar with something, they're a little hesitant until they gain familiarity with it. That's been with almost all of the equipment that we've used. It's not really an angry resistance. It's more of just a hesitation. Today we got a little cloud cover and it actually cooled down enough to want to make the walk out here with the camera and all of this stuff. It's been well over 100 degrees with the humidity lately. Yeah, I think last week we were pushing 110 and 115 with the humidity and grateful for a little pause. But typically through the daytime, they're kind of congregated back where all that marshy swamp area is back there. Where it's it a lot is cooler. Wet and cool. Mm -hmm. If it cools down later, in the week, I would consider coming out here with the stuff at night again. Experiment around with some of it and see if they're willing to come out in the cool of the night and interact a little with us. And Tell you what, I'll watch high and you watch low and okay. warn me if you see any little copperheads laying out here in front of me. I can do that. Yeah, I know everybody's been suffering with the heat, I think, across the nation. Uh, early this morning, I went out and was checking all the birds and went to the very back where the duck pens are at and I was looking back across the field and where that grove of those great big trees are at there were two of them back there. They haven't had any problem getting up close to us there either. We miss this section of woods a little bit more because it's where it all began but they are really active <laughs> where we're at so Again, no complaints, it's just something different. And we've got certain portions that are great big fields and I always keep my eyes peeled because, you know, it's been reported and I believe that off planet activity is also associated with the big guys. Generally, we experience them by way of orbs and, you know, unique anomalies like that. But it wouldn't surprise me to look out there one day in a huge field <laughs> and see some kind of craft. Wouldn't surprise me one bit. said it was supposed to only be in the 80s for the next couple of days so it might be a good time to do a night video again. Oh yeah and last summer was hot too I think we were pretty soaked to the bone trying to get some of these done. Uh, when you walk outside and before you've even grabbed a bucket and began doing what you need to do for the morning you're already 
soak from head to toe. And it's just far enough around the corner by the time you gather up everything. It, it's just a hot, miserable time right now. I doubt that the microphones picked it up, but it was just that low. That's the way the other was. It was more of a hey. Sometimes I think they just want you to know they're close by, you know, without completely revealing anything. You know, walk around this way and swing the camera back around. I know Junior and Took particularly have been masters of practical jokes and all kinds of stuff as Junior matures. I don't know that he's, Jonas, excuse me, matures. I don't know that he's allowed to be quite as frivolous. But I wouldn't put it past little brother. Let's cut through this way. dirt for new tracks but I'll show them it's just hard as a rock. Oh, well, that was me. <laughs> that was your Apparently big, I'm hard as a rock too. Boom. Well there's a peanut butter jar laying there. Those we traditionally find far and away from the trees. Somebody takes off with them and says, mine. <laughs> so quiet. Yeah, it's just spooky quiet now. We're going to try to ease back into the camera and equipment and hopefully we've got some cooler weather coming up that we can do a lot more. June was just absolutely horrible. Unexpected for sure. But again, I know a lot of people got nailed with it, so. Everybody stay safe if you're still getting it. It's well, dangerous. At this moment, I can't think of anything else except to wait till dark. So if you're ready to head back to a glass of iced tea and some air conditioning, I think we're going to wrap this up. We can do it. I appreciate everybody tagging along, and we will see you very soon. Yep. Bye. <laughs>